Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Hsu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video at laurashu.com. In this video, I'll show you the new texture editing tool that's available in Lightroom Classic, starting with version 8.3, and also in the cloud-based Lightroom application, starting with 2.3, and in Lightroom Mobile for iOS and Android. Texture enhances detail in your photo. In competing photo editing softwares, it's sometimes called structure. In Lightroom Classic, texture is located in the basic panel here in the presence section. In the cloud-based Lightroom, it's in the effects panel and in Lightroom Mobile on the effects tab. If you watch the photo here, as I increase texture, you'll see that it enhances the ripples in the water. So it enhances detail in your photo. Its focus is medium-sized detail, not the really fine detail like noise or pores. Values to the right enhance it, and then values to the left, negative values, smooth out that detail. Now watch these two branches here as I go positive on texture, and now as I go negative on texture, you see that the major lines and shapes are not affected. So again, it's focusing on small elements in your photos, not the large elements. Texture works by adding contrast to edges of those elements. It brightens the bright side of the edge of each of these ripples and darkens the dark side. I'll zoom in here and I'll go back to zero and then I'll increase it so you can see that brightening of the bright side and darkening of the dark side. Now notice that even though it focuses on medium-sized details, the noise here does get made more obvious, even though that's not the intended effect. That does mean that if you're using texture and you're producing large output, like large prints, that it's a good idea to zoom in to one-to-one, -to -one, which is 100%, to make sure that you understand the full effects of the values that you're using. In this case, I could then use noise reduction to reduce this. I'll go back to fit, and I'll collapse this panel. Now I've said that texture adds contrast to edges. Clarity also adds contrast to edges. So what's the difference? Again, texture focuses on the medium-sized details. Clarity focuses on larger elements. If you watch this area down here, as I add clarity, you see that all of the dark water gets darker and the brighter branches here get brighter. So it's focusing on the larger elements and it's affecting a much larger area out from the edges. So it has a very different effect than texture does. I think generally I would apply texture first and then I would look to see if clarity still makes the image look more appealing. If so, I'd go ahead and use both. Let's move on to this image here. If you look at this building here, as I add texture, it brings out the texture in the bricks and it brings out texture throughout the image. Now sometimes texture can have unintended consequences. So I've got texture at 100 here, I'll zoom in on the clouds here. I'll take texture back to zero and look at the building here and the sky and you'll see that that 100 of texture really accentuates color noise in the photo. It doesn't create the noise itself, but anytime you add contrast, whether using texture or another tool, as an unintended side effect, it does add saturation. It intensifies colors. So in this case, it made the color noise more obvious. This is a perfect example of why it's a good idea to zoom in to evaluate what you're doing with texture. That's not obvious at all when you're zoomed out. I'll take texture back to zero by double clicking on the word texture. Look at the edges of the clouds here as I add a hundred of texture. It creates a shadow along the edges, a dark halo. That's also an unintended effect. So in this case, you have a couple options. One is to back off on the amount of texture so that the halos along the clouds aren't obvious, 
and then go down to the detail panel and remove the color noise. Or instead, if you really want to go with more texture, you could apply texture locally with the adjustment brush, the radio filter, or the graduated filter, which in the cloud-based Lightroom are the linear gradient, the radial gradient, and the brush. We'll actually take a look at applying it locally with this portrait. I'll zoom in on the face here. You've seen that positive texture accentuates the detail. You can see that that's not a kind thing to do to a portrait. Negative texture smooths out detail, so it's a great tool to use for smoothing out skin. Now minus 100 is a little bit too much. Trying to make myself look 20 is going a little too far here. I'll reset texture here because we really shouldn't do this to the entire image. We should limit the effect to the skin. So I'll open up the adjustment brush. Now let me stop to say that this topic, using texture in local adjustments, and the last topic in this video, the difference between texture and sharpening, are advanced topics. If you're not ready for these, you can stop watching at this point and return to this video when you're ready for these topics. I'll keep going though. I'll double click on Effect to reset all of the sliders, and I'll use negative texture, and then I can paint. Of course, I'd zoom out a little bit and paint all of the skin, not just what we're seeing here, but you can see that this works really well. Now, texture won't affect major edges, so it's not going to hurt that I don't carefully paint around the nostrils here. Once I've painted, of course, I can change the amount, depending on my objective here. I'll move up here and I'll smooth out this area up here a little bit. Positive texture is good for enhancing hair. So if I wanted to enhance the eyebrows or the eyelashes or other hair, then I could do a second adjustment and instead of negative texture, I would paint with positive texture. I'll use the left bracket key to get a smaller brush here, and I'll paint along there. Now let's go back to this negative texture adjustment because I forgot to compare this to clarity. I'm going to zoom out a little bit with Command minus, and for this I'm actually going to go ahead and quickly paint the rest of the skin here, or much of it, not being very careful. So right now, we have negative texture. Let's take it all the way to negative 100. Smooth skin. Before we had negative texture, the way we would do skin smoothing in Lightroom was using negative clarity. So I'll double click on texture to undo that, and we'll use negative clarity instead. Negative clarity, unfortunately, makes things glow if you use a lot, because it's not protecting small detail at all, and it is spilling over edges in its effect. So you'll find most of the time that negative texture will give you a more realistic result. Now for those of you that use adjustment brush presets, you've had the softened skin preset for quite a while that uses negative clarity along with a little bit of sharpness. There is a new one here now called Soften Skin Light that uses a fair amount of negative texture and then just a little bit of negative clarity. So the Adobe development team has found that this combination of both effects can produce pleasing results. So let's zoom in and take a look at that. If you look at this area here, as I turn the switch off, you'll see before and after. That looks really good. Of course, the preset just sets these two values. You can always fine tune from here. Maybe I want a stronger effect on both of them. I'll put the brush away and then I'll zoom out. Now I've mentioned that texture adds contrast to edges and clarity adds contrast to edges, though texture is focusing on details. Texture, when it adds contrast, stays closer to the edges of those details 
clarity has an effect much further out. Now you may know that not only do these two add contrast to edges, but sharpening also adds contrast to edges. So what's the difference between texture and sharpening? Before I put it into words, let's just look at the difference. I'll zoom in on this piece of kale here. Watch this piece of kale as I slide texture from 0 to 100. 0, 100. Back to 0. And now watch it as I slide sharpening from 0 to 100. 0, 200. So you can see that they do very different things. I'll reset sharpening to 0 and go back to texture to say that texture adds contrast to edges much further out than sharpening does. Many pixels out from the edge. Sharpening, at its default settings, only adds contrast, brightening the bright side of an edge and darkening the dark side, one pixel out from an edge. Sharpening is working on very fine detail, which includes noise. So it's accentuating noise much more than texture is. Texture isn't working mostly on that very fine detail. It's working on larger detail, medium-sized detail. So they have very different purposes. Texture makes things feel more lifelike, more three-dimensional. Sometimes when I use texture on a scene, I feel like I can walk right into that scene because it looks so real. Sharpening is really designed to make edges, fine edges, look crisper, not objects look more three-dimensional. So even though we get noise if I go too far, you'll see in a sec as I increase sharpening that this edge will in fact get sharper. And when you get to the lesson on sharpening, you'll see that there are ways to mask off and deal with the noise. Bottom line, texture and sharpening are not substitutes for one another. As I said earlier, I would do texture as I work through the basic panel. Sharpening I generally leave for last in my workflow. All right, so that's it for the new texture tool in Lightroom Classic and the cloud-based Lightroom. I'm very happy to see this new feature in Lightroom. If you're watching this on YouTube and you've enjoyed this video, please show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, visit my website at laurashu.com and subscribe to my email newsletter so that you hear about my latest tutorials as well as Lightroom news as it breaks. I'm Laura Shue.